what I'm going to show you now um, is a typical lockout situation um, on some types of UPVC door where you actually need the key um, to operate the latch. Okay. Obviously, from the inside of the door, we can operate the latch. This is the inside, so you can see when I pull the door handle down, the latch operates. If I come in from the outside, I pull the door handle down, but it doesn't actually operate the latch. Okay, so what you tend to find is on jobs like this, it'll be a lockout situation where someone would have left the key on the inside of the door, come out, door's closed, can't get back in, because A, the door handle on the outside doesn't operate the latch, um, and also, even if they do have a key on them, if they've left the key on the inside, they can't actually operate the lock from the outside of the door. Okay, so the first thing that I am going to do is pop a key into the lock. Okay, and naturally most people tend to leave the key at a slight turn. Okay, so I'll just turn that key. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put myself in a lockout situation, but the first thing that I am going to need to do is come to the outside of the door and pick the lock. Okay, obviously I would know at this point as well that there's a key on the inside of the door because otherwise obviously it wouldn't be a lockout situation. Okay, here we go. Obviously, we've got our lock, and these um, types of lock are quite easy to identify because a lot of the time they'll have this short, uh, short little pad handle on the outside, and that usually means that the handle doesn't actually operate the latch, as you can see. When I pull the door handle down, it doesn't operate the latch. But the first thing that I need to do is just to pick this lock. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to get a nice close up of that again so you can see it being picked. Okay, so we've got our plug here. So the first thing I am going to do is to pick this lock. Now at this point as well, it makes no difference what way I rotate this plug. Okay, remembering that all I'm trying to do is pick the lock at this stage, or at least pick the plug, because I know that I'm not going to be able to unlock it just by picking the lock because there's a key on the inside still. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do, like I say, is pick this lock. I can get my tension tool into the plug. Okay, you can see this lock as well um, is an ICO lock, which means it definitely have anti pit pins. And also, you see this funny shape around the plug, and that's there to prevent us or is meant to stop us to be able to drill the lock. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this, and you know, I'm actually picking this in the wrong direction or in the opposite direction. So, just get my picks and start to pick this lock. Okay, see what I'm doing with my tension tool, on and off the tension, and just slowly picking through, and you'll see now the plug begins to turn. Okay, so what I'm now going to do, now that I've got the plug to turn, I'm just going to use, and what I tend to use is a bit of sprung steel, okay, like that, just a length of sprung steel. And the reason that I tend to use that is because obviously from the outside of the door you can't always tell how deep the lock is and that's just going to ensure that I find the back of the lock or at least the can. Okay so what I'm now going to do, the plug turned to around 3 o'clock, I'm going to insert this bit of sprung steel and what I'm looking for is a point where I can feel the pick wire go in a touch. Okay so all the time that I turn that I'm giving it very slight pushing inwards. Okay, because what I'm trying to do is see if I can catch that can. Okay, I can feel the can there. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, I can feel that I can catch the can, but the first thing that I want to do is turn this plug all the way around to around 11 o'clock. So I know to unlock or to operate the latch, I need to come away from the door frame, and in this case, it's anti clockwise. So I'm going to insert my pick wire back in. Again, I'm feeling for the cam around here. Not too fast, I don't want the lock to reset. Okay. Let's come back a bit. Oh, just actually let that lock reset. And that's exactly what can happen. Okay, I'm not going to cut this out. But it's just to show you that that can take place. So you do need to take care when you do this. Okay, I've seen that the lock picks in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to see if I can easily pick that in the direction to unlock, but like I say, it makes no difference. Okay. I'm just going to pick this again. 
obviously know how this time my tension tool is at the top of the plug. Okay, just change my pick. Don't ever stay with the same pick. Okay, it's not going too well that way. So I'm going to do, I'm going to pick it in the direction that I originally did. Remember what you're doing, you're always looking at the job at hand, okay? It's don't take anything for granted. Okay, so I just need to pick that again. You see how that's picked again? Okay. So again, my strong steel, I'm just going to bring that plug back round, back round, back round. And again, I'm going to start to fill the cam. So just there. Okay, so I've actually caught the cam there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep that pushed in. Okay, and I'm going to turn the plug. I'm just going to show you this from the other side so you can actually see in that position that that key. Okay, so I've got my pick and the, uh, my bit of sprung steel in the same place. And what you'll see is I keep that pushed in nice and tight. I can use something else just to help me turn the plug. And what you'll see is, you can see that key that would be on the inside beginning to turn. So what I do, I'm going to continue to turn that key, okay, in the direction to unlock, so in this case, anti-clockwise. All I'll be doing is bringing the plug as close to the reset point as I can. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this from the actual opening side. Okay, so you can see now I'm bringing it back up to around, uh, sorry, one o'clock, or 11 o'clock. Okay, at that point, if I go any more, Good chance I'll reset the lock again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the sprung steel. I'm going to bring the plug all the way back round, back to 11 o'clock, and fill for the cam again. Okay. And just note how all the time I just don't allow that lock to reset. Okay, just feeling for that cam. The point where I catch it, I'll know because I feel the bit of sprung steel. Just go in a touch, I'm back on it there. Okay, it isn't going to give me a lot of turn, but this is just a gradual process. Okay, so again, I turn that to one o'clock. Back out, the sprung steel, turn the plug back. Again, going in and feeling for the can. Okay. So we feel that point, but it's just there, it's just gone back in again. What I can do, just see how I can just bend the springs, uh, the sprung steel out of the way. Okay, and as I do that again, I'm going to start give that plug some help, bring it round, 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 and I can actually feel now it beginning to make contact. And what you'll see is I'll keep that sprung steel in, continue the turn, and that is the point where I'm making contact with the locking mechanism. And obviously, so you can see that. Okay, so if you watch the latch, I've got my sprung steel still pushed in, set into the plug, continue the turn, you'll see that latch going in and out. At that point, I would turn, latch retracted, push the door open, job done.